Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Aidan's Parish and our parish celebration of the 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We'd like to extend a warm welcome to all who may be visiting our parish. In order to help preserve the dignity of our sacred worship, we ask that you please take this moment to switch your cell phones to the silent or vibrate mode. We have only one collection this afternoon. We thank you for your ongoing financial support on behalf of our beautiful parish. Presider for our liturgy is Monsignor Emmett Nevin. And now please stand to greet our celebrant, Monsignor Nevin. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Good evening. We begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Coming together as God's family and with confidence, we ask the Father's forgiveness, for we know that he is full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. With the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to them, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my, in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, 
they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her reply, a woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It seems like a, a harsh reading, doesn't it? Well, let's take a look at it in perspective. Matthew is writing his Gospel for the Israelites, for the Jewish community. And Jesus came, as promised, to redeem the 12 tribes of Israel. They were the people of the covenant. God promised that he would bless them and make them fruitful and numerous as the stars of the sky. But the hitch was, if you keep my commandments, then I will be your God and you will be my people. Jesus is meeting with rejection. The Jewish leadership is becoming more hostile. They're not really open to him as the Messiah they have been promised, that they have been praying for. When he does appear in their midst, they're always asking for him to perform. Show us another miracle, show us another sign. And even when he does that, they go away questioning his motives and, and questioning what he's all about. So he leaves them for a while. He goes aside to a northern area, which is outside the Jewish region. Cana is really a pagan area. Tyre and Sidon are pagan territories. And there's a lot of Jewish people living in the area, but nonetheless they're recognized as Gentiles, pagans. And so when Jesus says, I've come to bring back the Lord sheep of the house of Israel, not you people, you, you idolaters, you worship gods of the moon and the stars and the sun and the wind and everything that you can possibly think of, you, you have no handle really on who God is and what I'm all about. In a sense, you're like dogs that, that consume anything. Your, your theology has so many things scattered in it and so many odd bits and pieces that really, after all, what is it but a whole bag full of scraps? But the woman's not to be deterred. You see, Jesus isn't there by accident. He's beginning to reach out into the Gentile territories. As Paul speaks in the second reading tonight, Paul, the, the apostle to the Gentiles, 
Jesus eventually makes it known that he's there for just everyone in the whole world that will listen and respond. But Jesus is there as a, a kind of a test. He's reaching out into this pagan territory. And something miraculous happens. A woman who's obviously raised as a pagan with multiple gods and multiple theologies immediately latches onto him and calls him more. And she also calls him son of David. She recognizes in him a special royal lineage and that he has the power of somebody that's royal to do something for her who's simply really nothing in the eyes of everybody else. And she is really insistent. She's not just testing the waters. She's not just saying, oh, what do I have to lose? She is convinced that Jesus is the one who has the power to do what nobody else on the earth can do. And that's why she keeps coming back. And he's very moved because here is a woman who is not one of the Lord sheep of the house of Israel, someone that the Jews would have felt was truly lost, period. And she has such great faith that he is very moved and impressed by this. And he grants her wish. Within that hour, the daughter is healed. So Jesus is always looking for someone to show faith. And obviously you and I, being born again by water and the Holy Spirit, have been given the gift of faith. We have been touched by God's Spirit. And we're always to allow that Spirit to dwell within us and to guide us and to help strengthen us, particularly in times of difficulty. But to always leave room to have faith. Faith goes beyond formulas that can be true. Faith goes beyond things that can be lined up and, and completely understood. Faith means taking a risk in favor of God, who has our best interest at heart. Faith means being able to hold on to and hold dear things that cannot be completely explained to us in human terms, because after all, we are human beings, and God is so completely other. That's why we love him and told. God's ways are his ways, and his thoughts are his thoughts, and human beings are different. So Jesus came to share with us things of God that we would never have known, except for his revealing them to us. And one of the things that God wanted him to reveal was his great love for us. Jesus was here to heal more than the Canaanite daughter. He was there to heal more than a, a blind person here or a, a cripple over there or even raising someone back from the dead. As wonderful as those things were, Jesus was here to perform an even greater act. He was here to offer himself as a sacrifice so that the sins of the whole world for all time could be forgiven. Now that's real healing. And he was here to show that by his death and resurrection, all of us who face the grave can also look forward to our own resurrection and eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Now bringing us back from the dead to live forever, that's truly an outstanding sign of God's love and of Jesus' power. And ultimately, if we have faith in that, in a few moments when we express that faith in the creed, it will mean something to us. Not just a formula to recite, not just something that we've become accustomed to over the years, but to think of every word and every line and every part of that creed, because we are the people of faith standing in the Lord's presence tonight. We're asking the Lord to bless us, to make us strong in our discipleship, and to one day come through for us just as he did for the Canaanite woman's daughter, to heal us from our sins and to heal us from the darkness of the grave. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now stand and profess our belief in Christ and his holy church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was the corner of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we gather in this house of prayer to praise the Lord our God, let us in confidence place our prayers and petitions before him responding, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Timothy, and all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, which comes down to us from the apostles, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dedicated school administrators, teachers, and staff, who are working so diligently to develop safe and effective plans for our children's return to school this fall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in uniform, especially those in law enforcement, health care, and EMS, that they, may enjoy the, that they may enjoy the ongoing support of a grateful public, and that God will keep them safe in the performance of their duties, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to heed the words of, of Isaiah, the prophet, by observing what is right and doing what is just in our daily lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's continued blessings upon us and our loved ones, that we may always strive to actively live our Catholic faith in all of our daily thoughts, words, and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are presently sick or afflicted in any way, we remember especially Anthony Camille, Emmett Nevin Sr., Peggy Fitzgerald, and all those whose names have been placed in our parish bulletin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our dearly departed loved ones, that they may now be welcomed to the kingdom of heaven. We remember in a special way Noel O'Connell and all those who died recently. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Michael Coffey, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we have just placed our prayers and petitions before you. We now pray that in your great kindness, you will grant what we have asked for through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus. 
Jesus is your friend. And if you lack for knowledge, he'll not refuse to lend. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick My brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good law of his holy church. Let us pray. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, be humbly employed by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate, the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Aden, and with all the saints on whose confident assertion in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory, and glory, and glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever.
For those who will be watching this Mass at home, our prayer of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. just have a few announcements. Weekly confessions, Saturday confessions take place 
in our parish meeting room from 4.30 to 5.15 p.m. The meeting room allows for proper social distancing and offers the choice of private or face-to-face -face confessions. We ask that you please make an appointment for our annual parish blood drive, which will take place in our parish gym next, su next Sunday, August 23rd, from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. The need is critical and your donation could be the gift of life for a brother or sister in need. You may check our bulletin for detailed information. Adult volunteers are needed for our PREP, Parish Religious Education Program. If interested, please read today's bulletin. We are not able to leave books and other printed materials in the pews for common use. We therefore invite you to take home a copy of the Church Missalette and to bring it with you every time you attend Mass. Copies are available on your way out of Mass today. Again, please remember to always take your books home with you at the end of Mass and leave nothing in the pews. The good news is we have more and more of our folks coming back to Mass. The bad news is we're reaching our capacity if we're going to properly space everybody. I'd like to thank Mark Albernan and all the members of our Usher Society who so very carefully try to place you. We try to place you in places where if you're a single, you're a single and not taking a place for three because that's the whole trick of the thing. Some areas are staked out for three people, two people, or just one person. And we really need your cooperation to go wherever the ushers guide you because at this time we need to try to find a place for everybody. We don't want to turn them away from the door. Also, when we go to communion, Please keep your mask on. When you have a person in front of you, just bow, receive communion, step to the side, and then receive. Please don't take the mask off as you're coming down the aisle because then it exposes you and exposes others. So step to the side, lift it up, and you're all set, okay? Little lesson. But it's good to see all of you tonight, and it's good to see so many of you have taken the, uh, the green missalettes, keep bringing them back and forth. It makes it easier to follow the Mass and some of the hymns, too. Thanks for being flexible. Let us pray. May partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Mighty God bless you always, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Go be justice to God's people. Teach the hard and hard to learn. Break the bread of true communion. For the cup of true concern Feed the hungry, house the homeless Catch the tyrants in their lies Be the Lord's anointed servant So God's justice never dies Go be mercy to God's people in forgiveness freely shown. Find a stranger, call her kindred. Find the exile, call him home. Age to age, God's mercy welcomes with a love that will not cease. Go be Christ's light to God's people, be an instrument of peace.